yo, I, I've been getting notifications for this channel from this Amish dude who left, you know, I mean, like the Amish lifestyle. And um, I'll be honest, these liberals takes are just so gar so fucking cringe. It's unbelievable. Check this shit out. So when my Amish father took his own life, he was alive for several more days. And when we were at the hospital, I'm the only one in the family that was not Amish. As all the Amish family was gathered together, one of my Amish brothers got very angry at the doctor. And he said, I need you to be honest with me. And I need you to tell me, is my father going to make it or is he not going to survive? And uh, I remember the English doctor, he looked at my brother and he said, okay, you want the truth? I'm going to give you the truth. Your father is brain dead. There's no more brain activity. But that machine that's beeping, that lets us know that his body is still alive, his heart is still ticking. Beep, 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 and all that. And I remember my uh, my brother, my, my Amish family looked at him. What? He's brain dead, but the machine, the computer's keeping him alive? And the doctor said, yes. And they said, you yanked that stupid worldly computer off of him right now. So the doctor did, and then my dad passed away. See, here's here's the thing, right? Okay. Fearing death is not something any man should do, right? Like you should like not be ready to go, right, as a whole. But at any given time, you should understand that like death is part of life. As much as birth is, as much as growth, maturation, you know, decline, all of these things, you know, children, family, food, pooping, peeing, all of these things. It's all just part of life. It's, it's part of what life is as an in general thing. And standing here and fearing life or fearing death so much that you're upset when somebody gets so injured that you want to keep them in that catatonic state just so you feel better. It's a fucking tragedy. I'm going to be honest with you. When I get old and I become completely useless, like I, I've had family members who my grandmother turned into, uh, like we, I, I called her a bean at one point. Right. You know, just like, that's what, that's what she looked like to me. She was laying in bed in a fetal position and they had to roll her to stop bed sores, right? And she was skinny. I mean, she was she was a you know she was a little woman, right? <clears throat> Going from this vibrant, amazing lady who had the greatest smile in the world to this bean, and people in my family all trying to out. What's we're looking for here? Um, trying to outdo themselves, right? With their virtue signaling about how much they cared. They're like, nobody better come around here with COVID, right? This was right around that time when she passed, right? When COVID like first hit hard, it was like that summer, like I think August of 2020. And <clears throat> in my mental, I'm looking at my grandmother and I, I love her. You know what I'm saying? Like she was, I was her favorite grandkid. Out of 50 of us, I was her favorite grandkid. And this is somebody who had affected my life, you know what I mean, more than all the other grandkids and more than all my other cousins, right? As much as her own kids. Mostly, she cared about me because my father married an Italian woman and I was much more like her and her dad and her brothers who she missed. It hurt, you know. I mean, when she passed, but it was a it was a relief because she wasn't suffering anymore. And I wouldn't have ended it early off a of GP just because of her being in that state. But I wouldn't have been mad if that was the decision made right and that was done in a celebratory ma manner right in a i in that idea 
Now, to say that, like, you know, she was a burden would be wrong as a whole because she wasn't. Um, because everybody there owed her her life. And I mean, there's like a hundred people who owe her personally their lives. And we all loved her to death. So, you know, caring for her was never something that it was like, oh man, it's such a pain in the ass having to be here and take care of her, right? Like, no, no. But the father deciding that he no longer wanted to be on this earth, which is fine. I have no problem with that. That's what you want to do. It's your business. How you end your life is one thing that I think you should have the right to choose, right? How you live and how you die is pretty much, you know, I mean, some, one of those, some of those few things in life that you might have some control over. And choosing that way is fine. And for others to stand here and go, oh, you should keep him on a fucking machine, even though like he blew his fucking brains out. It's, it's hard. No. And your family going, we don't believe in keeping him alive on these machines. That's great. Okay. I, I completely, you know, I mean, agree with these ideas. And I think that we should have these conversations among ourselves to go, at what point are you no longer living? You're just surviving and you're no longer passing down what you've learned. And if you're not passing down what you've learned, if you're all alone and like, you know, you've moved far away from your family and you're not giving that wisdom of what you've earned in your life to others. Shouldn't there be a conversation? Shouldn't we be allowed to have that conversation? Shouldn't we be allowed to make that part of our cultural conversation to go? Yeah, life's important, but not <sighs> being a prisoner inside of a, a body that no longer works or a brain that's dilapidating and being destroyed. They're out here in the middle of the night and chasing down children that have been gone for 30 years, looking for your brothers and sisters from your childhood. It's a horrible thing. I mean, <clears throat> shouldn't it be your choice? Not your kids, not the people around you. Yours. And shouldn't we as grown children, as grown men, that gray in his beard, teeth missing out his mouth, we're old enough to be able to accept the decisions of others and not be so selfish. <clears throat> to understand that there's things bigger than us. Things that don't affect us the way it does others. Like, if you don't want to be held together with bubble gum and good wishes, shouldn't you have that choice? And shouldn't those around you accept that? And if your community chooses that that's, that they don't want modernity reaching into their lives and their culture and who they are. And so be it. It's not our job to judge them. And it's not your job to judge them either once you leave. If you choose to leave, you're on your own as an independent man. You're not tied to that anymore. And that's an acceptance that you have to make. That's what it is. You chose to live the way you live. And I can smell the bitch in you, 100%. I can smell the, the weakness. 
And it's a fucking tragedy. But it's just reality. You were a bug man born to strong men. And your bug man self wasn't accepted there, so you left. I get it. Maybe your father coddled you too much. Maybe your mama loved you too much. I don't know. Whatever it was. I'm not 100% sure. But this dude, it's, it's a tragedy among men. It's a tragedy. He is the essence of what's wrong with our civilization right now. Weak children, unable to stand their decisions and unable to see bigger pictures. It's a horrifying thing. Look, I'm Tom Pease with Pinoid News, bro. Don't be this guy. Peace.